So I said, okay. So I'm thinking, you know, I'm gonna stay in real estate. I know it, get a good track record. So I take a job for this individual whose father died when he was young and left him this office building. It was a million square feet, downtown Chicago, and the floor plate was 100,000 square feet per floor. And he didn't want a tenant that wasn't willing to take 25,000 feet. And like, I just graduated, and I'm 21 years old, and he says, go lease this thing. And like, after being there nine months, I figured this guy hired someone to do what he couldn't do himself. So I'm like, you know, the job was, it was okay, you know, it was like two grand a month, and this was in 90, 91. And you're supposed to be able to make a lot of money in commission when you sign these big anchor tenants. But after nine months, I'm like, this job stinks. I'm gonna go back to that company that was really doing something innovative and taking these paper sales drafts and converting them over to an electronic solution and providing a new and innovative service that was really user-friendly, cost-effective, and provided a better solution more importantly. You didn't have to go deposit these sales drafts every single day at the bank to get your money. You push a button, you get your money tomorrow morning. So I called them up, I'm like, hey, remember me? And they're like, yeah, we do. We, we didn't want you to go back to school and finish. We wanted you to keep selling for us. And you left after like six weeks. I'm like, you got a spot for me? He goes, come on out. I interviewed literally the next day and went to work for him and was on the phones. And really, it was an outbound telesales center, very similar to an entry-level position in Merle Lane, Smith Barney was really, really innovative in the fact that you were taking paper-based customers and really converting them over to an electronic point-of-sale solution. And that was a very generous term because it wasn't a POS solution, it was a draft capture solution that would take those sales drafts, capture them electronically, and then deposit them. So worked for that organization for about 18 months, maybe less, maybe just over 12 months, and said, you know, this company is paying me way too much money they don't have very smart people working here. And they're making so much money in spite of everything that they aren't doing optimally. So I thought, you know what, this would be a really entrepreneurial event because I only have my own mouth to feed, right? It's not like I got three kids and I got all these other little like, overhead. It's probably not the nicest way to say it, but if you just gotta feed yourself, you know, it's maybe not a bad time. It was a good time for me. So I left that organization with the premise that I was gonna really improve on the technology, the processes, the automation, and the entire HR experience. And I'm say HR, I mean literally a better CFO, a better entire team. And provide a level of efficiency, rather, within the organization that was gonna drive it forward. Now, during that period of time, you know, you saw some really, really unusual events. The dot bomb crisis when all these businesses were just failing. So what I did is I grew the business with positive cash flow. No debt, just kept reinvesting, reinvesting, reinvesting all the free cash flow back into the organization. And to not bore you, advance the hands of time, 20 years later, and we have North American bank card where it is today. The video gave you a little bit of a flavor of where we are today, but what it didn't tell you is in Michigan, at our corporate office in Troy, we have just approximately 600 people, have just under 100 people in Montreal. Uh, we bought the fourth largest electronic payment provider to the government called Point and Pay. Uh, that's another unit that's about 30 people, but all in all, about 700 people, $400 million in sales last year. Uh, we've been growing. 37% compound annual growth rate over the last three and a half years. And in addition to that, we've launched a really, really wonderful new company that we grew from scratch, 100% organic, which is Pay Anywhere. And I would venture a guess that Pay Anywhere has gotten more publicity in the last 60 days than our entire organization has in the last almost two decades. And I think it's because mobile application engineering, specifically mobile apps that provide users a better solution, is where everything's going. And the journalists outside of the payment space have been feverishly writing about 
mobile payments. So I want to give you a little bit of flavor about what North American Bank Card does. So we compete against financial institutions. We compete against credit card processors. Uh, the world's largest credit card processor is a company you might never have heard of called First Data Corporation. Uh, you might have read about them in maybe a business class. KKR took them private for $26 billion a few years ago. And that's our biggest competitor. Well, it's because it's the biggest credit card processor in the world. But we don't really compete against them. Our organization uh, is very heavily based in technology. And some of the larger organizations that have a tremendous amount of debt and a tremendous amount of bureaucracy aren't able to move very quickly. They aren't very innovative. And that's what really sets North American Bank Card apart from our peers, is that we are innovative. We're a very entrepreneurial culture, you know, primarily driven from, from my leadership on down to the rest of the team. You know, it's, there's no finger pointing. There's no stepping on toes. Who's ever got the best idea, let's run with it. It's that type of culture that really makes the organization prosper.